Hello and welcome to Plastic Age Plays Trinity Continuum Core Strange Days Part 3. Uh, when last we met, our adventurers had made their way into the subterranean sort of sunken tomb uh, where they were in hot pursuit of the Red Widow. Uh, they started investigating the area and they discovered that there were some strange creatures inhabiting the region. Uh, they were set upon almost immediately upon reaching the bottom of this cave by what appeared to be um, perhaps Mayan or Incan or like proto uh, even you know uh, Native American like pre uh, Mayan civilization Native American warriors who were apparently out of phase with the current space-time state they kept moving back and forth parts of them would solidify while other parts of them would uh, dissipate and this presented all sorts of fun challenges for the group as they tried to engage in in physical combat with these uh strange creatures but nonetheless our heroes uh made it through and were not only victorious but uh largely unscathed i think you all had like some minor injuries maybe a little well we did have a giant door throwing <laughs> fucking <laughs> horned beast uh that we thankfully were able to ambush right <laughs> yeah when you you took out the uh as soon as the um spirit warriors for lack of a better term were dispatched uh the door to the tomb opened and what, as near as you could tell, was a massive mutant chupacabra um, came out, ripped the stone door off of the outside, and threw it at you. Uh, I think that, he thought I was a goat. Right. He must have thought, he must have mistaken you for a goat. And that right. fight was a little less kind to our heroes, if I recall properly. I believe you were still pretty beat up, right, Thoth? Is that accurate? Ruby had uh, an issue, right? Yeah, uh, I think oh, I had I had only one injury condition, I thought, uh, but okay. unfortunately, I don't have it here on my sheet. And uh, we'll, ass we'll assume that. one. And I know Ruby had one, but you got her patched up. Is that uh, accurate? Yes. Well, yeah. OK. Yeah, I wanted to use Walking Wounded. I don't remember if I got to or not. But. Yeah, I believe you got a chance to use Walking Wounded on her before. Good. Yes. Uh, is that accurate? Yeah. yeah, and and just as the dust was sort of settling from this, you heard some strange noises coming from inside of the tomb and saw a, a odd light emanating. And you waited, and um, the silhouette of a woman uh, appeared in the doorway, and what you all could o only assume was the Red Widow. And you were just about to square off, and I believe Thoth was just about to pull out his artifact when we wrapped game. Does that sound about like where we parked? I think that was where we, uh, where we parted. <laughs> yep. Excellent. So- uh, I tried to do presents on her and that wasn't quite enough. But no. somebody tried presents on her. So now- yeah. I think Ruby tried something too. Thoth pulls out something that looks a bit like a pine cone. Excellent. And we will dive right in. Uh, we're gonna just go ahead and assume that the initiative focus blocks are all of yours and then the Red Widows. And you produce this pine, cl pine cone looking device. And what would you like to do with it as you're pointing it at the Red Widow? Um, I'd like to, can I make the, the beast like, flop him over on top of her to like subdue her. Absolutely. Um, go ahead and spend the uh, one point of inspiration from your artifact. All right. And give me a die roll of your artifact dice, please. All right. There you go. Four die. All right. 
And we regain all of our momentum at the beginning of the session, right? Yes. So you're now at your uh, your party number of momentum. Two successes. Yeah, Excellent. I think it was I had to use that for the walking wounded, so I can do it again now. Without um, like back up dipping too much into the pool. You reach up with the with the device and this uh, sort of barely visible wave of energy moves forward from the end of the cone and grabs a hold of, of the beast and flings it at her. And you see sort of the slightest glint of light on her face as she turns and looks in, in the direction of it. And you see just a trickle of blood come out of her nose as she holds up her hand and stops it in midair. Oh, shit. She has powers. No shit. Uh, who would like the next focus? Is that allowed in this world? Yes, it is. Would you like to shift focus to Ruby or to Victoria? Um, I'll take it. Okay. Yeah. I raise my guns at her and I say, but can you stop a bullet? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, would you like to maybe, uh, try to intimidate her into surrendering with yes. this? Uh, all right. Let's go. Um, you can either go with using your intimidation. Do you have a specialty in aim that would apply possibly here? Uh, no. Okay. So let's go ahead and go with intimidation. And what's going to be your focus? What, uh, what attribute do you think uh, would work best with that? Wait, is intimidation a skill? Uh, I'm sorry. So, yeah, it would be... Um, Persuasion, actually, I think is the skill that you would okay. roll off of. Yeah, because intimidating is a type um, of persuasion. Can I use composure? Yeah, absolutely. You're keeping your, um, your cool enough to be intimidating to her. That absolutely works. And I apologize if you're watching and you're having Twitch issues. I just had a network error. Let's see uh -oh. if it went through on Twitch. Everybody still see us, I hope? Second. Yeah, it hit up to our second, it looked like, but it seems to be back. Okay, so it might have been just temporary. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, two successes, you say? Yes. All right. Uh, that, she will make a... Attempt to resist. We'll see how that goes out for her. Okay. Only one success. So you clearly have her on the ropes <clears throat> a bit. She is clearly nervous. Um, Sorry, but does not quite yet have time to react because focus then shifts to Victoria. What would you like to do? Hmm. Well, I want to defer to my team doing, you know, like I mostly just want to be backup. So uh, I'm going to block an exit if there's one nearby that she could escape down. Yeah. I think we're like kind of in the out, no. Yeah. You're, you're down in the bottom. And so like the, at the top of the... all the walls have basically imagine an area, probably about a hundred feet in every direction outside of this tomb has collapsed inward almost like a giant sinkhole and then the tomb is filling that center area coming out probably you know so you've you've probably got about 75 feet from where you're standing to where the rubble the base of the tomb starts um and was then, she expecting to escape on a helicopter or something or how, what was you're not sure your your assumption is that she would have to climb out up the walls just like you will But you can certainly uh, kind of just watch her and match movement if she starts to try to run a certain way where you can follow if that's... Yeah, I'm not is there something my, like holding I'm your turn? I'm not my action yet yeah. until, I can, until yeah, you she can, moves or situation resolves itself into... Yeah, you can sort of wait. Um, now, just so that I'm clear, Thoth, when you threw that beast, you weren't continuing to push it. You just lobbed it and we're done, right? Uh, I thought I could just like flop it over on top of her. That was the intention. But I mean, I guess if I, if it's, 
not going on top of her. I might want to keep her occupied until she gives up. Okay, so you would like to keep pushing. Keep, you're keeping pressure on it effectively. Um, yeah. She sort of backs up and starts to slowly try to guide it down to the ground. Um, and as you're exerting your force with this thing, she seems to have the ability to summon a little bit more telekinetic power. Um, you're not sure where she's summoning it from. It seems to be coming just from her. Um, uh, and the fact has never failed me before. <laughs> <laughs> she uh, holds her other hand up and says, perhaps we can find a solution that doesn't involve any more blood being spilled. Absolutely. Surrender. Come with us. No one needs to get hurt. I can't do that second part. I have an aversion to captivity. Then it seems we're at an impasse. So, uh, I remind us our mission again. I, I just, it's, we're it to is bring her specifically, in, right? we're, we're supposed to be trying to catch this girl. You're yeah. supposed to bring her in and if possible, either prevent her from using or recover the, uh, skull that she stole. Hmm. All right, then I guess we, I, I'm, I'm trying not to kill her. Cause I'm thinking it's like, it's a big beast. You could like, it's not like smashing her with two rocks. Right. Yeah. It's, it's a little softer. So I'd be able to just kind of hold her down. All right, you can keep pushing that forward if you want to. If you want to spend another point and make another roll to try to add more pressure, you're welcome to do so. Yeah, we'll see if she runs out of juice before I do. Sounds That's like right. a plan. She, maybe she's got more intensity, but I've got more longevity. <laughs> oh, yeah, can I, like, yell at her or something? Or well, no, use, I, what's I Iron Will do? It, um, you resist uh, efforts to forcibly change your mind. Oh, as right. long as you're alive and well, if it's like a battle of will. Oh yeah, if she if she attempts to uh, if she starts messing with me psychically, yes, that would be valid. right. That would come in handy. But, I, but hopefully, I'm using up most of her bandwidth. <laughs> uh, can I? Uh, um, yeah, you know, it's like maybe they'll make a deal with you at headquarters. Uh sure, yeah, <clears throat> um, and. If you want to try to make a persuasion check, so are you going to try to persuade her or are you going to try to push the, the beast harder at her? Yeah, I guess I was just trying to like keep the pressure on because she seems to be somewhat, she seems to be kind of, you know, uh, letting it go. I mean, she's not actually going against me. And so I want to keep pressure there so it's not just, you know, it's no longer a threat and see if I can use some, maybe at a disadvantage of some sort, the uh, trying to just, you know, influence her uh, also. Yeah. So what it would be is you're basically going to be splitting your pool. So you'll make four, uh, a roll of four dice for both actions. Um, so you'll have the uh, four dice from your artifact to keep the pressure on and then four dice for your persuasion roll and then whatever, uh, up to four dice for your persuasion roll. So what would, okay. what would be your approach for the persuasion? Uh, just using my presence. That's like, I, you know, i I've obviously uh, been, I am not uninitiated in the ways of, of the powers that she is wielding. That's fair. Damn it. Okay. The artifact roll failed. Oh, no. Okay. Well, I mean, it, it, uh, not critical fail because you have to get like a one or something and right. no successes. So it's just no successes. Okay. And then you said with the, uh, with the persuasion, I have to, uh, would, what, what do I roll? It'd be the same. It'd be a <clears throat> persuasion and then presence. Okay. And just, pers but, just but presence. you can only roll, but only up to four dice because you split oh, your action. Okay. Yeah. All right. Take a, yeah, split the, the dice pool. Okay. I got uh, one success re-roll. Just the one success okay. on the persuasion. So she drops, <clears throat> like, as you're sort of struggling with her, she definitely gets the beast to the ground. <clears throat> and she turns to you and she says, 
I have no issue with you other than my desire to escape. So... Give us the artifact that you got here. It's inside, the, it's inside the tomb. You're welcome to it. If you put those guns down, I promise not to kill you on my way out. How does that sound? Well, I have no issue with you other than my mission to bring you in. What are you going to kill us with? Says, well, hopefully nothing. But uh, don't let the appearance of me being unarmed fool you. And she holds her hands up. And you see her, both of her hands split down the middle and form into effectively like double blades at the end of her elbows. Like the flesh and, and bone realign. It's still flesh and bone, but now there's like serrated bone edges on the arms. Um, and you also start to see uh, spines come up from her shoulder blades uh, as if they're starting to form wings. It says, it's up to you how this goes. Hmm. She's fucking Kara getting out on us. I know, right? <laughs> Third queen. Yeah, wow. Well, okay. That's cool. I mean, I'm I'm kind of into it. Uh, <laughs> this is interesting. Do you have anything you can disable her with? Really? This cyber this normally would be a cybernetics achievement for this to be the so flawlessly fused with can the you, bone and the biology. Can you hit her with something to to to, uh, so to tranquilize her while I try to overpower her. I I have bullets. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe. Well, is there something in my medical? Don't kit? go for the kill shot. Is there something in my medical kit that I can MacGyver while observing her physiology? <laughs> Uh, with my sciencey medicalness and and determining how she might uh, be brought down by a trank dart or some such that I, surely I have in my medical field kit. Uh, sure, if you want to spend a point of inspiration, you absolutely have trank darts in your field kit. <laughs> That's Excellent. how that works. <laughs> That's fantastic. So of course, I have trank darts. Yep, you uh, hey, pull. Wouldn't it? You're going into a jungle. You always bring <laughs> right. Trank darts. You pull out like. <laughs> This cute little derringer that's got like two two trank darts in it. You're like, oh, that's handy. So I um, spend an inspiration point. That's I love that. <laughs> that's so happens. That was there the whole time. Exactly. <laughs> that's how um, movies work, right? <laughs> so are you gonna uh, take focus and fire this trank? Oh, yeah, that, that held action. I'm gonna go ahead with it. All right. And so that'll be a time it with my attack. It'll be an aim, and then um, what's your approach going to be to this? Well, my aim shot. Um, uh, definitely. Well, I mean, of course. <laughs> I was thinking of doing like uh, medicine dexterity or medicine composure to where I like either stick her with a needle or with a gun, dart, whatever works to, you know. I'll let you use. Get her in a vulnerable spot. I'll knowing, let you use like, medicine dexterity if you rush her as well as part of the attack. Sure. All right. So you get in close enough and you start running up and you're like, okay, the arms are a little weird and the back's a little funny, but the rest of you is basically human physiology. And <laughs> go to, <laughs> exactly. Go to get her in it's the neck with a trank dart. All right. Yeah, so uh, you will roll that. that um, and then you'll and have <laughs> you'll have a plus one enhancement from the actual trank gun itself. Four, so five for medicine, and then three for dexterity. Yep. And that's it? And then he knows about enhancement. Oh. Right. So that's all that I should have. Right. <laughs> oh, the black ones. I've got to move those out. Um, so one's a 10, and one's an eight. All right, so you re-roll your 10. I don't know what this one is. Is that a nine? That's a a, little yeah, that's a nine. Okay. So three passes and a re-roll. All right. Seven does not pass. So three. Yeah. So three four with your enhancement. Yeah. So that's just enough that you stick her with the needle. Um, and as you inject this tranquilizer into her neck, 
Uh, you see her look at you for a second, and her eyes go droopy for like a half a second. And then you see the skin where you stabbed her kind of bubble and shift. And she like goes back to full awareness. Almost as if she somehow psionically altered her biology to be immune to this, uh, to this knockout drug. Hat mutant. And that brings us to uh, Ruby. Okay, I'm gonna shoot her. <laughs> <laughs> that seems like the right choice. <laughs> that's that's fair. Um, anything uh, particular? Anything unusual? So it looks like she's growing wings. Yes, it looks very much like there are stalks coming out of her shoulder blades that have like a um, like a bat wing sort of like uh, tissue hanging off of them. They're not fully formed yet. All right, I'm going to shoot that. Okay. So, I will give you a plus two complication as you are trying to target a specific part of her body. Okay. So let's see. Ooh, wow, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> I got a nine and three tens. That's awesome. I'm just going to re-roll those. Oh, before I forget, you okay. also all do get a point of momentum. You get another point of momentum in the pool for the knockout drug not, not knocking her out. Okay. Because it's technically a failed roll. So you get a point of momentum. Five successes. Excellent. Um, so that will overcome... And your guns are a plus two enhancement or plus one? Did I tell you that? I have no idea. It'd be a plus two then. Two because it's a pistol. Yep. So that'll overcome your uh, that'll overcome the complication for aimed, and that over, that's enough to hit and enough for one. Um, uh, one success goes over the defense and the targeting. So you can either choose to um, disable that limb or to deal her a injury condition i will disable the limb okay uh the wing tip basically sort of pops off of her back and the rest of it almost despite the fact that it for all the world looked like a bone coming out uh once you've shot the tip off it sort of spaghetti noodles back into her skin and Ew. she lets out like a, a shriek as blood sprays from the wound uh, do that, i do I get huh? to shoot both my guns? Yes, absolutely. Okay. And you're ambidextrous, right? Yes. Yep. Thank you. I forgot that you were two fisting it. Two successes on that one. That one does not hit. You okay. shoot a little wide. Um so that will bring focus back to her. She is going to I have a very loud bird out back, apparently. <laughs> Some crows. Some Everybody's... crows fl fl fly over the, the uh the battlefield. Right. <laughs> Everybody's a critic. Oh lord. <laughs> um Oh, I have uh kittens and uh, well a kitten. And there were a pair of them mating like right outside my window, like singing and all that. Sh it was my cat was losing her shit. She was like, "Let me out there! I just want to <laughs> hug them with my face a lot." <laughs> so, give me two seconds here to look up her power. She's gonna do something not very nice, probably to you, Victoria, because you're close. Yeah, because I melee distanced her just recently. Yep. Yep. You're like, ha, gotcha. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, she's a strangely adaptive mutant. I mean, my fascination about this biological specimen is definitely piqued. Or curiosity. I mean, that's fair. Yeah. This is some. <laughs> so it's more like, step. Oh, well, that's interesting. 
so, <laughs> some weapons grade shit in the genetic makeup. Here is what she's going to try to do. She's going to do her level best to grab you. Uh, just a straight up tackle. Would my danger sense help in this? Uh, no, because it's not a surprise. You see it coming for sure. Okay. Um, no and, surprise here. Uh, what you could do is you can use the dodge action. Sure. Um, which would take your next action away. Oh. But it lets you roll oh. uh, to try to increase your, your uh, defense pool. Or you can just hope that your defense pool is enough to keep her from grabbing you. Yeah, no, I'm going to hope for now. All right. I'm not going to dodge yet. Uh, I want to be ready next turn. To All right. Stop. So that's one, two. Oh, it's one. Hold on. And my cunning's at max, so I should theoretically be like. What is your. On my feet. What's your defense trait? Uh, I don't know. You don't have any modifications to it, right? I, I, Where do you look for the defense trait? Oh, there it is. I mean, right? No, I that's no destructive. Idea. Yeah, the uh, defense trait is generally one unless you have armor on or something along those lines. Well, it's all. Oh, I see. We've it's got. Yeah, it's all blank there. for us. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, it should be a one. Sorry. Um, so she does get a enough to get a hold of you. She does no damage, but she has her hands. On, she has the the uh, blades have sort of clamped down on your arms. Mm -hmm. And you notice that as she has grabbed you, she's stepping forward and starting kind of this spinning motion. Mm -hmm. And you catch this, particularly, Victoria, because you're locking eyes with her at this point. You see her eye color shift to match yours. And her nose start to reform as she appears to be uh, taking on your appearance. What? And that Could will bring us back around to Thoth. What would you like to do? Uh, uh, try to separate them, like just like before she. Like in other words, it, 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 as soon as I'm like seeing them, her going for the grab, I want to, you know, be like, nope, and push her away. Okay, uh, yeah. go ahead and make your uh, roll with your. Uh, you're using your device, I see. Artifact. Yep, spend yeah. another point and roll that artifact. Let me make a roll. Down to seven. That's a lot of points still. So. Yeah, that's not too bad, though. Um, yeah, so, but this time, not quite so gentle. Okay, <laughs> that's fair. Kind of more blasting her away. Good. Oh, wait, that's only two. Need the other two. There's one success. That's good. Successful free roll. And oh, that's a one. Uh, do one ones only count when you didn't get any success? Right. right? Ones like, only matter if there's no material success. Yeah, it's just one on reroll. Okay, cool. So it's just one success. One is all you needed in this situation. Um, okay. <clears throat> because she's grappled and she's focused her energy somewhere else, you basically surprise her. I mean, she knows you're there, but she does. there's nothing she can do about it, really. So you blast her free. She only had one success in her grip. But as you blast her free, you see her arms starting to bind back together. And like her hair color changes to match Victoria's. She's in the middle of, of assuming her appearance. Uh, focus will shift back to her, which she will spend the rest of the turn trying to complete that task. So creepy. But now, hopefully, there's enough distance between them that we know which one's the real one. At this point, there is. Absolutely. You can clearly see which one is the real one. But she is effectively a flawless copy. Yeah. So, can you I know, if they get away from her, <laughs> if they <laughs> dance, it's going to be a problem. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. And that will shift focus back to uh, Ruby. What would you like to do? Is there anything around us that I could use to tie her up? Uh, well, that depends. I mean, uh, you do have an inspiration you can spend, right? Sure. Right. Uh, what would you like to be around you that you could tie her up with? What do you think might um, be down in this old temple laying around? So we start with five inspiration oh, per uh, session. Is that how that works? 
Uh, your inspiration doesn't refresh each session. Your inspiration, when you spend it, you get it back like over time when you sleep. Um, so whatever your inspiration rating is, you start with that, and then as you spend it, you lose it, and then when you rest, you gain points back, I believe is how that functions. Gotcha. Yeah, spend one point. Okay, I will spend inspiration to find... Manacles? Manacles would be a bit of a stretch. I'd let you do it for two inspiration. You could find a set of rusty manacles that had been left behind. With one inspiration, you might might find maybe a bullwhip that was left behind by an ill-fated archaeologist who tried to come here once and died. Um, what if Ruby brings her own? What if? <laughs> what if? What if everywhere she goes, she happens to always have manacles because that of handcuffs because that's just how she rolls. And Ruby she would totally carry handcuffs. handcuffs with her. Absolutely. All right, that's fair. I'll I'll give you a handcuffs. I'll give you for one inspiration. When I when you say manacles, I'm thinking like. You know, yeah. like prison. I don't, walking, I don't think yeah. handcuffs are, are what I'm looking for in this situation, though, because it seems like she can do a lot without specifically her hands. Um, yeah. Rope? Sure. Yeah, rope is good for one inspiration. Um, right. It's old. Site. It's old, maybe hemp, maybe, uh, you know, you're not quite sure. It's old, it's dusty, uh, but you think it'll work for in a pinch. Oh, yeah, chat had All some right. good ideas. I'm going to scoop that up and I I guess tackle her and try and tie her up. Okay. Um, go ahead and uh, w that'll be a brawl. Close combat brawl? What? Brawl. Yes. Uh, roll uh, uh, what is it? Cat fight scenes. The sexual yeah. cat fight scenes. Yeah. And, <laughs> yes. and what would be your approach? Uh, cunning. Okay. Cool. And I have a specialty in improvised weapons. Wrestle on the ground. Okay. Uh, what's that specialty under? Close combat. Okay, so it wouldn't directly apply to this role because you're not cross using it. But it will apply when you go to actually uh, restrain her. That makes sense? No. What? The specialty doesn't directly apply when you're using the direct skill. So the grapple, it won't apply to. Okay. When you're going to restrain her, then you'll get an enhancement because you're specialized in the uh, okay. improvised so these weapons. Are Two separate rolls. Right. Well, yeah, it'll be two separate turns. The first turn, you're just trying to get your hands on her. Okay. <laughs> Some of the, the uh, comments I can see from here. <laughs> no, I already joked about that. I was like... <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Two successes. Okay, cool. Um, so you grab a hold of her. And as soon as you do, her full attention shifts over to you. Um, I'm die. <laughs> and that brings the focus of initiative I'll let you. back to Thoth, correct? Or no? Victoria. Victoria, yeah. you, have, you have focus. What would you like to do? I'm not going to let Ruby die. But for now, <laughs> that's thoughtful uh, of you. Well, do I have rope also? If you want to spend uh, inspiration, you do. Um, what was that? Or like I said, a bullwhip that you know an, an uh, ill-fated mm -hmm. archaeologist left behind. Uh, a chunk of crystal skull that was just left laying around. You know. Um, yeah, my dexterity is okay, but just I'm mostly in like I don't know medicine and composure, like it's, and cunning. It's not very, I'm not very like physical character per se. Um, hmm. Well, you could always try to mix up something stronger. You could. Uh, you could also try to figure out why it didn't affect her. Uh, yeah, you know what? I would like to to spend some time doing my medicine scienciness um, to try to figure out what 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 like what the hell, and also why she looks like me. What is happening? Okay, uh, so that would definitely be medicine. What are you? Uh, what approach are you relying on? Hmm. Either intellect or um, 
Yeah, probably intellect. Okay. Uh, yeah, give me a medicine intellect roll. Um, you're familiar with... Cause my, med my medicine is diagnosis, so like knowing... Because it's a five. Sure. So the, okay. the special medicine way uh, is diagnosis, so I'm like good at figuring stuff out about ailments and yeah, things absolutely so, uh so a bit of metagame questions here so like for instance her in her uh finesse she has cunning extremely high is this a situation where um where it wouldn't be appropriate to use cunning like in other words like how do you make a decision what well, to use because it's a cunning uh, when you read because about i'm it. trying to like avoid not you know it's like i'd like to right <laughs> always pick the very best thing i have well but sure and really you know it's kind of a double-edged meta question that you're asking because the system sort of asks you as a player to try to do that, to try to find ways to explain how you're using, how you're putting your best foot forward, right? But having said that, though, some things are very clearly like, if you're thinking about, do I know this, it's very hard to make an argument that's not intelligence-based, right? Okay, kind of um, specifically... His wits are quick and his eyes are nimble. So it's very much like a reactive, a first danger sense. Right. Uh, he has devoted his life to truly knowing his surroundings. Nothing escapes his perception. So it's high perception more than knowledge. But, you know? yeah. but, but having said that, though, if there's a way that you can weave it narratively where it makes sense, like... So I'm beginning to get that's the reason why they have this, this variability is to get you to... Weave actively yeah. weave the, a story around how right. it is that you're using that approach. Uh, exactly. Because they, 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 you've got to make an excuse for why you can use that approach. So, you, they, so therefore you do have to tell the story of how you got there. Right. Uh, right. That, that, that's kind of, that's clever. Yeah. So this yeah, is more like knowing your surroundings, looking through disguises, being like uh, perceptive. So I'm like, ah. I have or just being very quick on the uptake. Yeah. You know, if, if it was, if it's a situation where you're like uh, hoping for a lucky guess based on a, a little bit of information, cunning might come into play too. But at this point, you're you're kind of analyzing it, thinking about it. So I think intelligence medicine is probably fine. Yeah, that's that's what I'm feeling um, as well. So okay, my medicine is five. One, two, three, four, five, and then that one is three. Two, three. Do, 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 do. I got one pass. At least, okay. I think everything else is ones and fours and fives and twos. Yeah, yeah, one pass. Okay. All right, uh, that's sufficient enough for you to make a leap. Um, you're familiar because you know you're all you know part of the Pharaoh's Light Keepers. You're familiar with the fact that the world is a much more interesting place than the average you know person realizes. And I'm sure my work with the military secret DARPA type stuff right. is part of my background also. <laughs> You've seen strange stuff before. And yeah. <laughs> uh, as you're looking at the, as you're looking at this, you're you're realizing you start thinking back on things you've heard about like, you know, uh, Russian psionics experiments and things along those lines. And you start to realize that if she was able if she's not carrying a device that allowed her to manipulate uh, and catch that being then she's probably psychically active, which means that she's probably using some sort of like biopsionics to alter her physiology, not only to create these weapons and these wings and, and whatnot, but to give herself effective chemical immunity. So this wouldn't be any, any kind of piece of equipment that she's wearing. This seems like more part of her, you know. Yeah, specifically body. the fact that she got a bloody nose when she caught that thing in the middle of the air leads you to believe that that was a concentration thing as opposed to like or she's got implants that are doing it one of the two do we have an amp does anyone have an amp <laughs> <laughs> well it just so happens it will cost Shoot her head. <laughs> it will cost a little more than one inspiration to have something that'll generate an emp in your and your person but it's not impossible if it's a, if it's an implant uh if unless it's just full genetic uh, you know, pure genetic splicing. Then, I'm hoping to get my hands fucked. on that that <laughs> artifact. That's like that. That is my long term uh, aspiration thing. There, yeah, exactly. You an don't even have short term. An anti technology 
Look, field. You didn't even write in your short-term inspiration. I did, but they got erased. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, all you have is a long-term. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I only think long-term. All right. Um, um, That's how we met. I've got a ten thousand year, you know, uh, you know, <laughs> thinking pattern, and you know, you, you, I'm, because as a tech expert on ancient technology, we Makes met sense. at a, a DARPA conference. You know, we were. There you go. That's true. There you go. So yeah, that's what you come to from that. <clears throat> but that also shifts the focus, um, if I'm not mistaken, back to your girl, uh, the Red Widow, who is now yeah. locked up with uh, Ruby. Shoot on ahead. <laughs> um, so Ruby, she's going to try to basically... I guess first question is, how would you like to have grabbed her? So, in my mind, I was like yeah, I'm staying using away using the rope part. like Jackie Chan style, and just kind of wrapping myself and it around her like a monkey. Okay. Cool. I like it. Um, so she's going to like try to reach out and grab you, and say. Come give us a kiss, sugar, as she pulls you toward her. It's what she's trying to do. We'll see if that works. Uh oh. This is probably a bad idea, but I want it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and your defense score is one. Okay, so that's three, four successes. So. Uh, she grabs you, and she doesn't go for any sort of a wound or anything. She does pull you in, and you don't... It doesn't hurt, but you feel like a nibble on your lip. And as you back away, um, it's up to you whether you still maintain the grapple, because she has not tried to break it yet. Um, but as you back away, you feel blood on your lip. Yeah, I'm going to maintain the grapple. Okay. You still have a hold of her. You're up very close and personal. Um, it is very difficult for your friends right now to tell the two of you apart were she to start looking like you immediately. And that brings us to Thoth's turn. <laughs> what would you like to do, Thoth? All right. Seeing that she's trying to restrain her, I'm going to see if I can basically use the, my artifact to kind of create... A, like a confining field that's going to try to like crush down on her. So she has to use you find going to power? her concentration to resist it. Uh, and so she's like, she, if she does not resist so, it with her, with her power, it will begin to crush her. So like Absolutely. Air around her? Yes. Something like that. Absolutely. Um, go ahead and make your, we can like run her out of some of her power while we're getting her restrained. That's a good call. Go ahead and make your roll. All right. Drain her while the Ruby's. I am going to give you a plus one complication on this because um, Ruby is so close to her that you're going to have to be kind of precise with your aim. Okay, so this is just the artifact, right? So the four die. That's correct. Oh, no successes and two ones. Oof. Okay, so I will allow you to either. Um, uh -oh. <laughs> uh, have like an immediate sort of uh, botch response with momentum or I will allow you to use your momentum to reduce the severity of that botch um by no, i'd rather one. like have a response with the momentum like one okay. turn this is how ruby uh, dies all right. <laughs> <laughs> so as I'm you sorry. fire as you fire this out you while you know your way around this technology this is ancient and it's not you're not an expert uh, you're an expert on it but you're not an expert with it, you're not, <laughs> I wasn't born in that time. Right. I didn't design it myself. <laughs> and you send forth a blast of energy. You absolutely do. 
um, and your party may gain two momentum as that blast of energy hits her and seems to have, as near as you can tell, recharged her with psionic energy and caused her to, uh, you're assuming, immediately uh, change at no cost into a direct duplicate of Ruby. So now any actions that either of the two of you take against either one of those are going to be um, at a plus three complication until you can figure out which one is which, as they're both wrapped up exactly the same way in the rope. Like they both have like a rope around this arm, like pulled down like this, kind of strewn around their back and are standing like a foot away from each other in the same stance. (laughs) Ruby is so confused and turned on right now. (laughs) (laughs) She's like, like, God, I'm hot. Like, how do I... (laughs) (laughs) It's like... You know, that question I was always asked about, what would I do with my clone? (laughs) (laughs) And that shifts the focus to Victoria. What would you like to do? Well. Are you thinking about what you you do with those clones? (laughs) Definitely. Well, I'm much more fascinated with the biotech Kerrigan lady. Um... So my will's pretty good. Uh, so I feel like if I got involved there, it'll be fine. If your artifact goes off again, it's fine. It's fine. I can get in there. I think. So well, you figured? Did you figure out? Did she figure out something about why the just previous that, one didn't that work? She like she just has ability to. Say, uh, fuck you, no, I have super brain. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's she, can, she can alter her biology psionically. Yeah, uh, with her brain. Well, um, you just gotta keep your, your phase variants on your, you know, the plasma anti, inverters. Anti proton shield penetrating. Yes, exactly. It's like you just gotta plasma keep, rays. You just keep the, the warp variants on the. The, the end. Anti frequency spectrum. Right. Yeah. Right. You can try. <laughs> you can. You can absolutely try to um, sort of techno babble your way around that issue. Um, there's a couple ways that you could go about it. Uh, you could try. Um, if she's there's only, there's got to be a limitation as far as you can tell. There's got to be a limitation to how much of this she can do. Now she did just get a power surge that may that you're hoping explains why she was able to shift forms so fast, because it took her right. two turns the last time. Um, you could, it's possible you could overload the system. Hmm. That, that might be something you might be worth trying. Hmm. Would I have any ability to do that myself, or would it be something I can just tell them to do? Um, well, uh, how would you like to go about it yourself? I mean, you could try, for example, I don't have any, like psychic uh, device. I don't have any Duke's Machina devices, unfortunately. So. No, but um, you could try to see if uh, there would be ways. Unless. Like, you're surrounded. You're in this jungle environment, right? Uh-huh. Um, and you do have inspiration. You do have momentum that you can spend, right? I do have some inspiration. Yes, still. And definitely. what about your patrons so, and stuff? Because there's like you could look at the what does uh, that, what does that yeah, do for you? No, I can I can get us to a safe house, right. but that's about the extent of my pull with them. <laughs> so, like for example, you're in a, you know, if you if you settled on like I'm going to try to overload her biology, right? She can only adapt so much. Let's say you assume that to be true. Um, yeah, maybe I can do some sort of grappling technique to like force her, because like, does she just automatically chameleon to whatever's around her? Maybe like having multiple that does not seem to be the case to you it okay. seems that she had to make physical contact with you to be able to take on your appearance well point is if i go over there and touch her would she be compelled to now start looking like two different people can we like overload her that way or is oh, it just i mean that's, a choice? that's worth a shot um you don't know it's worth worth a try so you can try grabbing her i damn it Oh, wait, I still have my machete arm. <laughs> you do still have your machete arm. That's true. <laughs> that should be worth something. But uh, did you understand I, I meant like you could like you know, also cha- keep changing your the medicine that you use, you know. Uh, the other, so just to keep her like adapting? Other, right. Uh, like if, she, right. if she's having to. 
Like maybe she can't keep adapting. Um, sure, yeah, <coughs> excuse uh, me, sorry. Let's try that. Um, hmm. Yeah, maybe. Uh, so what would a, a medical kit have? Uh, let's assume since my inspiration got us a medical kit with tranquilizers in it, it may also have like epinephrine and a various other like uppers and downers. Right. Yeah. I mean, you could make like a you could make like a back alley speedball and just inject her with it if you wanted to. Like. Yeah, I just want yeah. to fuck with her system and make it like overloaded by having you know, overloaded. Yeah, there you go. Having it's, various different things that it's doing. some sort of neurostimulator cocktail. So you reach in to the medical kit and just pull out two handfuls of syringes and go running over there. I love it. Uppers, downward, downward, side lasers, round abouters. You're either about to have the worst time of your life or the best. I don't know. <laughs> And drill, you know, <laughs> just like MDMA, and they're like everything. Yeah. Um, so let's do. Uh, are you going to run up and try to stab her with all these syringes? Yes. <laughs> all right. Let's do a me medicine. And what would be your approach? Is this going to be off dex? Is it off of might? Is it off of cunning to keep track of which one's which? Uh, like what's uh, what's going to be more composure and medicine? Yeah. Um, I think it'd probably be more well. Do you prefer, cunning would be like quick thought, composure would be like staying calm despite the fact that she's looking like your friend, right? So Oh definitely quick thought just in case she's got like wings and other crazy shit and okay. that she'll be flailing so, about. So it's, uh, just to make sure that you got the hit right. Bam. Yeah. Right. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, Maybe three, even four, five. fake her out. All of these. All of the ten days. Yep. Oh, I got a camera freeze from YouTube, but don't worry too much about it. Um oh. Yeah. You both uh, still look cute, so you're fine. Good. How many successes did you get? Sometimes uh, this is the way I look to... Yeah, maybe. Do we, are we going to have to disconnect and reconnect? Oh, there we go. Oh, we're is bad. That... Sometimes the wireless ah, does there we that. Go. Yeah. Okay. You have returned. Welcome. Oh, yes, you. we're back. All the dice. Um, so I got a lot of eights. One, Sweet. two, three. Well, three eights. And then one zero zero. So that reroll, right? Right. Yep. So one, two, three, four passes. And five passes. Excellent. Cool. So you look over uh, Ruby and you see her come running up like screaming with these two handfuls of syringes and darts like right past your face and oh, stabs the other one. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, fills her just full of random stuff. So <laughs> let me uh, make a check here and see how this turns out for her. But Ruby's like, how did you know? How are you that <laughs> sure? <laughs> Hold on. She's like, oh, I wasn't. <laughs> oh, yeah, that is exactly the answer she would give. In, in Ruby's mind, it's obvious. So it didn't even occur to her that y'all would make that mistake. <laughs> okay um so she will suffer um you have a choice you can either have her suffer two levels of wounds or you can have her suffer one level of wounds and knock her prone if you want knock her to the ground um or you can have her suffer one level of wound and then add a plus one complication to her next action because she's drugged up. <laughs> so you have to make a decision about that. Um, yes, exactly like what's going on with your hands right now is what it looked like. <laughs> yes. Uh, maybe the prone thing until next turn or... Well, what? prone is not that can, valuable. Can, I, can uh, you go over the two effects? Well... Um, like so if you knock her prone, she, A, she'd have to get back up, but B, she's already on the ground and it's about to come up to focus on uh, Ruby and then Thoth again. So you'd she'd already be on the ground for you to try to hold her down again if you wanted to give that another shot. Um, you can give her just two wounds. Um, well, I'm, I'm still grappled with her, right? You're still grappled with her, but the, ultimately it's the rope that's tying you together. So if she's knocked down, you still can be up standing. What do uh, wounds do? Like, yeah, wounds, well, like, begin to, like, yeah. affect your ability they, to do things, right? They start taking if, complications, yes. 
yeah, if Ruby's got her physically, I can just like keep her incapacitated, you know? Right, right. So the the, the wounds might be the way to go because that's kind of like a moving towards incapacitated. We don't necessarily right. need to kill her Cause because Sprout, it, like, not the same. Well, as here as in D &D, or... I don't know. So like, you know, prone may help in some way, but it's like um, the, the wounds will definitely last longer. They'll definitely have a more lasting impact on the combat. I think that the, all the crazy yeah. drugs probably not not good for not you. Good, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? no, wound sounds like the, the better option it, in this game. She takes two wounds and she still has four needles sticking out of her flesh that you haven't depressed yet. Uh, you're not quite sure what's in them, but... Uh, <laughs> Let's hope this goes well. <laughs> oh, now she's really hyped up and concentrating. Great. <laughs> so that will then bring the focus back. Forgive me. Is does it go to Thoth now, or does it go back to Ruby? I'm not sure. I, th I well, think... it's up to you two. Which one would you like to take it first? I guess. Um. Yes, you guys, you guys seem to just. I think I'll go go first because that way there would be less possibility of confusion now that I've got a target. Which Whoa. is the one with the needle stuck in her? Yes. That's fair. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's true. so I'm I'm gonna try to you know once again try one more time to hold her. It's like, All right. wait a minute, that didn't work, right? <laughs> Let's try this again. If I do it again, is it gonna have the same effect? Let's <laughs> see. <laughs> Very good. Uh. Go ahead and uh, give me those dice from your uh, artifact. <laughs> I mean, I was able to blast her away. It was uh, what's going on here? All right, do it. Rolling only four, man. Whew. It's a little scary. Damn it! Is it what I think it is? No successes, right? It's not. It's not at a seven or above. It's at an eight above or above, right? Yeah. It's eight or above. But did you no get successes and one failure? Yeah. Okay. Um. You fire again. Another one. Damn it. The dice just don't love you today. And this time, um, you you gain another momentum. Congratulations. Um, but this time, as you fire, you do apply pressure, but you catch um, Ruby in it as well. So, Ruby, you will also have a plus one complication to whatever your next action is, as you and her are both being sort of pushed downward. So here's the thing. Um, so we've got momentum. Mm -hmm. Maybe what I should be trying to do is like she was doing by giving her tons of drugs and then feeding her with a bunch of uh, energy and stuff. Maybe we can overload her that way. You could try that. That, so that is a tactic. Can we use momentum again? Uh, so you would spend momentum um, generally to buy enhancements or to activate your uh, your abilities however uh for in, with inspiration if you wanted to if you have three inspiration you can spend you can basically rewind your action and do something different okay apparently my skill like do i have skill tricks that Everyone like, has a skill trick. okay what was it um uh -huh. it looks like it's missing yours was one. the mathematic one the um the polymath the polymath yeah is your skill trick yeah the right that back in that's yeah well i've got that written down there okay um oh, okay so that's a, that's called a skill trick polymath is a skill trick. Okay, and you get for that. one uh, it depends on the skill trick i guess but i right I have to most skill one. tricks are activated with one momentum right yeah but you could sure. spend so for for example if you wanted to um spend three inspiration to rewind that action refocus on filling her with as much sigh as possible and then spend momentum for enhancement on that roll, you could. You still mm -hmm. need to get a material success, but you can spend enhancement or spend momentum for enhancement as long as everybody's okay with it. Okay. Are you guys uh, okay with trying that out? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's All right. juice her up so much she pops. Mm. <laughs> All right. So what do I got to do to to accomplish this? So you'll spend three of your inspiration and as much momentum as you want. You currently have six momentum in your pool, I think. Because um, we gained one. 
Yeah. Then I think momentum is all that refreshes for each yep. session. Up to half yeah. your pool, I think, is the maximum you can spend. So you can spend three. Let's spend half our pool. So three. All right. So go ahead and make that four die roll. You still need to get one material success on it. For the enhancement oh, on, to on only four dice? It, indeed. Oh, my God. Okay. You can do it. The, it's so low probability with only four dice. You got it. Got one success. Yeah. <laughs> That's all you need. Oh. Four so dice is not enough. You um, start over-channeling this thing and just pumping Psy energy into her. Um, and yeah, her body starts to like lose like cohesion and shape almost. Like as she starts taking on like different facial appearances and, and her skin tone starts changing back and forth, her hair color and length starts shifting um and she lets out a horrific cry uh as she passes out unconscious yes, yes. all right let's tie her up but i don't know if, man when she wakes up let's go keep her uh, keep her sedated i was about to say uh i just so happened to have saved a sedative syringe <laughs> That'll cost you. A, that that'll cost daughter, you an yeah. inspiration, but sure. Um. <laughs> all right, all right. So let's sedate and bind her comfortably. Yeah, I'm a tie her up. All right. Excellent. Um, now that she is in her human form, we'll sedate her with this. I so, was at six before then. How many points of inspiration should be left in my artifact? Uh, your artifact, you only would have needed to spend the one point of inspiration from. You had to spend three of your personal inspiration for the dramatic yeah, damage. So okay. Your personal is down to two. So now I'm down to five, and uh, on the and, and I'm down to two. Two personally. So as you're artifact. tying her up, and she's laying there unconscious on the on the stu stoop of this uh, temple, uh, you look inside and you see that blue green sort of glow coming out, and you can see. From where the stairs, from where this door opened up, imagine the door in the side of the stairway opened up like that, and then the chupacabra ripped it off and threw it at you. Uh, there's <laughs> a ramp that goes down on the inside, goes down probably about 30 feet, and then leads outward to a platform. Um, the platform's wide enough for one of you to walk, you know, for you to walk on single file. And in the center of that is a pedestal, and sitting on that pedestal is the skull that she had... Uh, the artifact that she had stolen, I should say. Um, and it's sitting there and it's the one, it's the thing that's emanating this glow. Um, she right there. Well, she had stolen it from somewhere else and then installed it here, basically. Right. Oh. Okay. So, so she's, she is a whole person and she's unconscious. So I, I don't know that any of us necessarily want to carry her. But I also um, don't want to leave her unguarded. So if we need to, I will stay behind with her while y'all get the skull. Okay. Uh, I may be the right one for investigating this. Yeah. Um, I'm going to yeah, I'm gonna that. straddle her and press my gun directly to her forehead. Yeah, that makes sense to leave that one. As the yeah. fan art rolls yeah, in. No. Um, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's uh, probably a good call. Um, yeah. yeah, like you're like dodge this, like Trinity in the Matrix, like yeah. pushing in her cheek like that. Um, yeah, that's fine. Are the two of you then going into the temple, or is just yeah? I'm gonna ask her to walk a few feet behind me. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna tie off a rope just in case yeah, around to... my waist and give it to her. I may need to mend his broken legs, depending on what's going those, on in the temple. Uh, these temples, they can have some right. bullshit. That's bullshit true. <laughs> his booby they, traps. Like they, rolling they, boulders and, you know. Right. That's why I Crystal said skulls on top of the... Oh, man. Do yeah. I have a bag of sand? I can be like... <laughs> For one inspiration, you could have a bag of sand in your pocket. <laughs> yes. um, so you, I also have to have the right hat and a whip, though. I mean, That's, that's true. Like, well, there's whips lying about. There, is a, there may be whips around. You never know. That right, is so also the, true. The area that we're entering is so is it kind of like lit up by the glow of the skull, <laughs> and it's like on a pedestal. Absolutely. 
So it's as you walk, as you step in, you can't really tell from the top, but as soon as you start going down that uh, ramp that leads to the that leads to the uh, outcropping, the path that leads over to the pedestal. Um, when you step on the ramp, you look down and you can see that on either side of this uh, path that goes out to the pedestal, it drops off probably another 30 or 40 feet. And you can tell that there's some sort of uneven surface down there. It's not illuminated quite well enough for you to make out what it is, but you definitely see uh, round bits and pokey sort of sharp looking bits and uh, longer sort of looking uneven bits. Um, and it just seems to be like littering the floor on both sides of this. So if you fall down, you're gonna fall into this uneven surface. All right, are there any like swinging blades that might come out of the wall or? Uh, none that you them? see. Um, see. Let me go ahead and look something up real quick. Let's see. Any human head level darts yeah. coming out of the far end of the wall to shoot out the pressure plates? Does it say anywhere that the penitent man shall pass? It does not say the penitent man shall pass. Um, <laughs> Does not say Can that. Uh, search for traps. Only through the word of God will he prove his worth. Um, no, and, uh, uh, leap from the lion's, lion's head. head. Yeah. Yeah. Um, give me a, a insight and cunning check if you don't mind. Okay, that's me. Yep. Because <laughs> I don't think my insight and cunning very good. I can give you All right, insight. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> well, if you're up ahead, your first check. Is cunning traps. is one. Oh. Insight. You know, maybe I Where should take insight? point, honestly. You know? Where is insight? Is insight, Let me just insight the skill I'm asking you for? Or am I getting my systems twisted again? I don't see it. Uh, maybe. Wait, there's, yeah. there's a No. Oh, wait. Sorry. What am I no, I think there's a Teddy Larson Medicine Persuasion oh. Pilot. Er, I'm sorry. Integrity, not insight. I was running Vampire 5th Edition this weekend in my. I got my skills backwards. Integrity. Integrity. Huh. What is integrity? Well, I mean, I've got zero in it, so I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm no. in a zero and a one here. Integrity uh, what, is like your, um, it's like a reflection of kind of your ability to uh, hold your shit together um, uh, under stress, kind of, but it's also, uh, real, it also forms a perception pool. Huh. So you have like one. I have zero in integrity and one in cunning. All right, give me that one die. Let's see how it goes. All right. An eight. Well. All right. Um, you notice there are no traps. However, you do notice as you step down, this entire path is just the slightest bit concave. Or convex, I should say. Sort of bending outwards. So it's just just enough to kind of fuck with your sense of balance. <laughs> um, but since you're aware of it, it's not going to create any additional complication for you to get over there. Um, and you do see, now that you're closer and there's a little bit more light, you, you kind of look over the edge a little bit and you see that these uneven objects on the floor are bones. Skulls. Beamers, rib so, cages. So people have unsuccessfully navigated this little path here. Seems like it was a quite a dumping ground for some for some time. Hmm. Uh, I'm gonna ask her if she sees anything because it's like looks like a lot of people didn't make it. This doesn't <laughs> seem I should probably like take, just an easy walk here. I should probably take point in terms of cunning um, traps and stuff because. Well, looking at who's going to heal you if you get uh, hurt? I'll heal myself. Uh, <laughs> integrity is. Physician, like, heal thyself. <laughs> uh, looks to be integrity. They're saying while um, uh, it sees an opposition to persuasion and command. Mm. So a person with strong composure is naturally resistant to being convinced, uh, but integrity skill measures how experienced they are at resisting attempts to influence them. Yes. And for some reason that's beyond my understanding. It's also part of the perception pool. Yeah. It's, like, <laughs> yeah, it's your emotional fortitude against outside influence. 
And I guess maybe it's like, because you you're together in that sense. I guess it's maybe so that because you're tuning out distractions, maybe that's the reasoning behind it. Yeah, that's just a little weird because I've also got iron will. Uh, right. it's, I've got no integrity, but I've also got iron will, which is all about <laughs> res result, uh, you know, resisting. Right, you know, but resisting you have a high resolve though, right? Uh, I don't think so. Well, I think you just picked iron will though. Oh, I do have a fairly high resolve. Oh, okay. Yeah, because some of it is that there's multiple ways to skin that cat, and they each reflect something slightly different. Because integrity would be trained, something you've practiced, whereas your natural resolve or composure is more just like your uh, huh. instinctual core sort of like... So integrity, a lot, that may be kind of like military training, though. They've wanted to say military training without saying military training. I mean, to a degree, yeah. Specifically like, <laughs> specifically like a psyops kind of training. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Um, so what do we look what do we used to look for traps so you could be using uh, integrity and uh, it'll either be cunning or um, unless you have something that you can convince me would be better than cunning uh, well I like cunning but I want something else for the other one um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah if you have another skill that you think would work I mean I'm, I'm open to hearing it um, I mean, I think survival would work, but, uh, I'll allow survival. I'll allow survival. Yeah. Trying to see if there's anything around us that will be dangerous, uh, yeah. as I, yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll let for the minutest. Oh, it's survival slide. That's not, that makes sense. The things. <laughs> so, yeah. Drawing on your experiences and traveling in, in, uh, jungle territories. Yeah, four passes. Two of them are rerolls. Uh, nine, th uh, five passes. Okay. Um, so as you're looking around, you see no trap mechanisms on the path. Seems like it's just. The, seems like it's just a matter of keeping your balance to get across it. However, you can definitely see that there is. While there's a thick layer of dust and cobweb on the pedestal itself that this skull is on, mm -hmm. there are various areas where it's disturbed, where it looks like maybe disturbed from like shifting mechanisms. So you're pretty sure that if you interact with that thing in the wrong way, something will happen. <clears throat> you're not quite sure what, uh, but it itself appears to be trapped. All right. Well, in that case, I'm gonna be like, well, hold on, don't touch yeah, anything, because I'm like, like, if she starts go, going that direction, then she could let me, uh, you know, know about all that. Exactly, because like, you're much better at the machines. And things. All right. So, yeah. so this is the point which I'm gonna try to oh use. My God. I so, saw like a thing. on enigmas, I have reverse engineering. <laughs> yes. Okay. That Excellent. I would want to, uh, you so know, use better. like so, you know, what has happened, what could happen, like trying to, and you know, and if I can like trace the, the, what is it, not a pull on the panel and look at things. Do and, you, uh, if, what's your technology? My technology is two. My right. enigmas is four. Let's my do is three. Let's do a science. And that's where I've got science history and uh, as and polymath as part of science. What does your science say right there? And would you uh, say this is you're going through intellect because you're kind of taking your time, or would you say you're relying on? Oh yeah, yeah, I'm taking my time because I figure that you know we got girl dosed up and tied up with somebody on her with a gun and trained to her head, deadly, so. and this could yeah just be like the OSK kind of thing. All right, so you and can somebody... either I'll give you a choice. You can either roll your science with your intellect and take the plus one enhancement from the specialty in reverse engineering or you can just roll the extra die that you would get uh from using your tech or your uh enigmas okay but what but about the, um, but then you won't get the uh what about my polymath uh um, well that's your perk is that I mean, a, skill, is that a skill trick how do you use that polymath so that's not, that's was a science skill well, trick. you would use your um momentum for that well our momentum for that yeah, that's the one you spend momentum for, if I'm remembering correctly, right? Let me look that up. As a skill trick? I don't know. Because I thought you I'm used that, if I remember correctly, that's what you used when uh, you were fixing the engine on the plane, right? 
I think so. Yeah. Yes, yeah, Ben, one momentum to ignore the requirements for a science specialty in developing that particular device. So in reverse That's engineering. That's for the polymath. Right. Well, yeah, that's what we said. Okay. Yeah. Right. So. But you mean, you're technically, a, a do, it's a device that you're messing with. Right. Yeah. I mean, so I, I can grant you if you spend the momentum. Um, I mean, you can spend momentum anyway to get uh, enhancement on the roll, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's up to you which way you'd prefer to tackle it. Uh, you can get one less die with a free enhancement, one more die with no enhancement, or you can get the extra die and spend a momentum to get an extra enhancement. I see. All right. I think that this is a good time to go ahead and spend a momentum and, and, and get with the maximum I can go with here. Okay. So that would be, so I'd go with the enigmas and the, uh, in the enhancement uh, from the spending a uh, momentum. All right, let's see those dice. It's intelligence enigmas then. All right. So that's five, five and four. So almost all of them except one. Yeah, and well then uh, the enhancement is just an automatic su success I add, right? Is that that's correct. Okay, uh, all so that's all of them. One, so. so it's four, yeah. Four and nine. Three. I mean, four and five, right? Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Jesus. I see two eights. Two, three. Just three. That's it. I'll okay. Pay for more than that. And then the, with is that including the enhancement then? That, oh, no, that's four, not including four the, enhancement. With the enhancement. Excellent. Great. So you, uh, first of all, you figure out that there is a sequence that you need to push in order to safely place or remove this item. But you also figure out that there is another sequence that you can push while this item is on that seems to, as near as you can tell, will eject some sort of energy out through the device, uh, particularly aimed directly upward. It won't, it, that won't trigger it. Uh, it won't trigger any of the traps, but if you don't use one of those two sequences, if you push the items in in any other sequence or try to move it without it, uh, basically the entire platform is going to bend fl or drop flat and drop you and whoever's with you <laughs> into the, the pit. But uh, it's just that simple. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so you can, okay. you, you, you're pretty sure you have the sequence to safely remove or place the, the skull and the sequence to activate this device whatever it is intended to do activating the device that's probably what she's Your already done once. Nice and high too. should i activate the device to see what it does it's already active isn't it no 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 oh, i can run some energy through it yeah it's it's glowing right now but there seems to be like a burst that will fire forth from it um I think this is the right code. <laughs> I don't understand any of this science stuff. So. <laughs> I'm, um, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm going to run some energy through it because I can't help but be too curious about this. All right. Uh, you fire the energy out and uh, the energy, like, there's like a, you feel almost on like an instinctual, like, primal part of your brain like something that your basial ganglia reacts to you know like, so just this this weird like instinct that something wrong just happened um which you both feel and i need the both of you to make a um let's roll our resolve and composure please Seven for me. It's uh, ten of the dust total that we have here. Yeah. Um. That would be one botch. Wait, wait. What about that? That's a six. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. You sure. Um. Yes. Okay. 
All right, what about you? Hello. Um, doo -doo -doo. Dun, 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 dun. One pass. One pass. Excellent. So, Thoth, you have just a moment of... Um, you feel the surge as this energy shoots up from the skull and bathes the entire room. And you have the briefest moment of a loss of consciousness. But you catch yourself like... And when you, when you come out of it, you catch yourself as if like you're about to roll out of bed, almost falling off the edge, but you sort of right yourself. Um, however, you, uh, Victoria, don't have the experience that loss of consciousness. You keep yourself together long enough. As you see, when this beam shoots up, it goes up kind of through Thoth for a moment. And, you know, he's got like this very heavily like silhouetted, Looks like in Star Trek 2 when Spock is digging around inside of the warp core and there's all this energy shooting up. That kind of look to him. And you see, just for a moment, this faint outline of an, an almost humanoid shape sort of occupy Thoth's space for just a, for just a brief moment. And then the light fades away. Uh, you also suffer um, two wounds from uh, two wound conditions, basically from like radiation damage. Uh, both of you suffer that. Oh, lovely! How? Well, that. Uh, how do we mark that? Yeah, how do we do that? So you would, uh, if you have none, you would go down to I think injured normally. Uh, you Actually, just. I think I had. But how do we mark it on our shoe? Yeah, so I'm uh, I was already had one, I think. And uh, you can just write down next to the one that it's currently active, or there should be like a place to put an X on the line. You can just put an X okay. on the one that's current that you're currently suffering. Okay. So that's my So this... then I do so basically I I go X X X is what I do. Yeah. So you have so it goes good? from top to bottom. Okay. And I don't understand what the little dots in these things mean and what the numbers mean. In the... Well, dots are how many you get to have. Okay, so... Oh, then that means I'm knocked out or maimed or... No, no, I'm maimed. Yeah, prob probably maimed, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and then the plus is the degree of complication that you have from being at that wound. Our character sheet doesn't have pluses on it. It has minuses. Does it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think I gave you old character sheets. Okay. So but, yeah, so then all I had was a total of three possible as bruised, bruised, maimed is is my normal injury condition progression, right? You should have bruised, injured, maimed. You're yep. You should have skipped the second bruise. Oh, wait. Injured. Yeah, you're right, actually. Okay. I get to have one bruise, two injured, and one maimed. Yeah. Um, I Have I taken damage before? No, I don't um, think so, you have. Okay, good. So this is my first. Yeah. I'll put a one on the bruise then. Yeah. So you took two, so you'd be at, uh, one bruised and one maimed. Two, because... Okay, yeah, so one, one, bruised, one bruised, one injured one for injured, her. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. One bruised, one injured, sorry. Um, and so this, while this is happening out there, as soon as that happens, you kind of hear the, the sound of this energy pulsing from inside. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, the Red Widow's eyes shoot wide open. And for a moment, uh, you see like blue electricity dancing across her open eyes. Oh shit. What would you like to do? I keep the gun pressed to her forehead and I, I press my other gun to her like collarbone area. Okay. On the forehead. So that it, <laughs> if I shoot that one, <laughs> yeah. So if I shoot that one, it won't kill her, but it should injure her significantly, especially okay. from this lack of range. She starts mumbling in a language that you do not understand. Neat. Hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Does she seem conscious of me? Um, she doesn't seem to be paying, paying any attention to you at all. Eyes are wide open. There's this blue energy dancing in her in her eyeballs. And she's mumbling in a language that doesn't even sound human. 
really. Which, by okay. the way, as soon as I come to all fucked up, I, I would like to eject the thing. I'm like, oh, <laughs> shit, she <laughs> fucking done that. Hashtag That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Um, I'll allow it. So, yeah, it, it lasts for probably about 10 seconds, and then her eyes go shut again. Oh, okay, good. That's... <sighs> <laughs> I'll sit there going, oh God. Woo! We just had to oh. the Eldritch plane with the Cthulhu and all the. Yeah. These, <laughs> these two come out like smoking. <laughs> Peeling off our second layer of like, you know, chemical burn of the, the radioactive, yeah. you know. As soon as you pull the skull, burns. it stops it stops glowing and all the light stops and there's no energy. Uh, oh, uh, the other thing I forgot to tell you is both of you that were in there can fill your inspiration all the way back up. And your device fills all the way back up as well. Okay. Oh, all right. Cool. Well, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> but our momentum pool is like two. <laughs> right. <laughs> or three or whatever it is. <laughs> Ten. So, yeah, they, they come walking oh, out, yeah. smoke rolling off of their bodies, carrying the skull, looking like they they just ran through a fire. Yeah. Exhausted, I mean, but reinvigorated. I had a choice I had to make. It was 50-50. <laughs> was it really, though? <laughs> Hashtag thought did nothing wrong. Yes. <laughs> there was two choices. I went for it. You won. The skull has been acquired. She is still unconscious. Um, is there anything else right. that you would l like to do at this point? Um, make sure Loot. to keep her dosed up. <laughs> but yes, like looking around for any other, like, is there anything else that uh, I could have gotten while, you know, digging around in the guts of uh, the uh, ancient tech? This place seems to be eerily quiet now. Hmm. So no loot. So it's really all about this skull thing. What the shadow creatures? I think that might have had something to, what, to do with what she had done. It's possible. And you blacked out. I'm going to have to examine you for residual energy, antimatter, wavelength damage. Okay. Guys. Yeah. Oh, yes. Thank you. Um, um, can I use like my artifact at like a low level so that we can basically like hoverboard her out of the, the jungle? Absolutely. Um, I'll just make you spend the one point for it. You don't need to even roll. Um, oh, we she's not the resistant. Tied up girl that oh, the captive? Right. Are yeah, you... I'm going to try to keep her dosed up, but also, like, I definitely do want to do some medical diagnosis to see if there's going to be any, like, lasting effect from having some strange consciousness. Yeah, do we have, like, Enter. a telephone we can make? So, <laughs> like, like, okay, what do we do with her? We don't, we don't have a Call in plane. air support. Yeah. Like. So, so y'all have returned to to me now, right? Yes, yeah, they've exactly. wa they've walked out. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And yeah, we're, we're making her hover. Like our hair's all like singed and and a little smoking. Can can that thing hold two people? The hover. The, yeah. Just hovering. Yeah. yeah. Sure. <laughs> just right on yeah. top of her. Cool. Excellent. Because I'm just gonna just keep. Yes. Keep the guns on her. Good idea. All right. Uh, you. you managed to uh, get out of the hole, make your way back to the biplane, um, and call in that you have gotten her to get uh, local law enforcement to meet you out there to pick her up. Oh, thank goodness. While oh, you're waiting. Local law enforcement can handle this. We need, we need some people from our group. Oh, well, sure. Right. They're, they'll, they'll send, uh, yeah, they'll send a containment team. Uh, to come and grab her. Because yeah, you have a patron, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, they, they send con a, a containment team. They tell you it's going to be um, probably an hour or two before they get there. Just keep her uh, sitting tight and they'll be there soon. Uh, while well, you're my looking. Contacts is a super science artifact dealer. So there you uh, go. They might be able to get us help. Yeah, they I might. also got a, a pro lab as one of my uh, contacts. Go ahead and make a medicine and intelligence check for me, Victoria, as you're examining Thoth. 
So yeah, my medicine diagnosis uh, at five and intellect at three. Am I feeling especially sinister? <laughs> uh, no. Especially not, lightning. Not sinister. Uh, one, two, two passes. Wait, is that a nine or a six? I can't That's tell. a nine. Uh, three passes. Okay, so as you're uh, looking Thoth over, you notice some strange things going on physiologically. Um, more curious than anything like outright alarming. Mm -hmm. But like, for example, when you do the uh, pupil dilation test, it appears as though there's a second response to the pupil dilation, as if there's another set of pupils dilating in his eyes. <laughs> And it seems to be like that. It seems to be going a little bit faster than the original response. Um, give, give it to me straight, Doctor. Am I gonna live? <laughs> You'll be all right, soldier. The Just other thing you notice you next week for... is like the reflex tests he's reacting to before you actually make impact, like on his knees. Like as you're hammering his knee with the little hammer. Uh, all of his all of his uh, neurological responses appear to be slightly before the stimulus. I feel kind of like a Jedi. <laughs> there, the temporal anomaly might have followed us home. I want you in for observation weekly, soldier. Um, makes sense. I don't want to be locked in some sort of temporal displacement. Someone will have to make a, a thing to like put on my chest. And like to keep me locked keep in place. <laughs> locked to this dimension. <laughs> right. Excellent. Um, anything else that you would like to do while you're awaiting your airlift? Uh, use the inspiration, or uh, sorry, the remaining momentum that we have to uh, patch us up um, through more walking wounded. Uh, you can use that one yeah. time per session per person, I believe. So you could patch each one of you up for one health level. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because I only did use it on Ruby so far. Yep. And, and Ruby is now well, not currently injured, correct? Yeah. Yeah. And that wasn't this session that you used it. True. Um, and true. we do have three momentum left, so I can use it at least twice. Sweet. So and it, um, I forget what it does. Hold on. With that, you uh, victoriously await a... your... It, you, it, you allow them to remove one of the wounded conditions, okay. whatever their most severe wound condition is. Awesome. Good. Um, yeah, you uh, patiently Perfect. wait and are airlifted Good. out by support. They take your prisoner into custody. Good. Put her in a reinforced uh, holding cell in the back of their little uh, VTOL that they send out. And they ask you if you need a lift or if you're uh, ship is going to be able to get you home. Uh, well, didn't they like malfunction? What, yeah, what, what, some... What's my impression of the condition of the plane? Um, it's working. Uh, you're gonna. It's taking off from here is gonna suck, but you can do it. So, because okay. it was a mysterious break to the engines, but that might be related to the skull, the skull thing. Yeah, no, I think we fixed all that though. Yeah, I mean, we but did taking off. It for them is going to be are they in a helicopter is that why it's easier for them they're in a virtual takeoff and landing plane so the wings ah. like turn and it hovers yeah. down and neat yeah. i mean i can fly us out right on that's where we'll wrap up game for this session um i believe that would count as at least one short-term goal accomplished by everybody uh, so you can all have an additional uh, experience for that. And so we're get... basically all at like two experience? Uh, I should be at three, four now because you should get uh, one f or get two for just completing this task in general. Like the wrapping up of the story will give you two. So you should all have four. Okay. So where do we put that right now? Where right here under experience. Oh, experience four, okay. So yeah, my other short-term goal was to become indispensable to my team, so hopefully that worked. I would say that you accomplished that if everybody else would agree with that. I think uh, yep. you uh, 100%. allowed them an opportunity to put her down that 
probably wouldn't have happened had you not uh, injected her with everything in your first aid kit. Yeah, that's very helpful. <laughs> yeah. We're also all the patching up and things. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Everybody cheap. loves uh, loves the medic. Yeah. So you can you can gain another experience. Check your and did you have any? Uh, did either of you have any short term goals that were accomplished besides catching? I had not. I had not written down any additional ones because I'm yeah. still not sure how exactly that works. And also, apparently, my character sheet didn't keep the ones that I had written down. I didn't replace Team Survival, but I would have added. Are we supposed to make, the... like have new ones each? game so, session or each mission or how do, they be, how do we do that theoretically the way that it works is you choose them and then you as soon as whenever the session ends that you have fulfilled them you choose a new one you can also abandon one and choose a new one if you want to so like for example let's say that she had gotten away you could abandon one of your current short-term goals and replace it with go catch her you know, if somebody makes you very mad, you can abandon one of your short-term goals and say, I'm going to kill this person. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, they're really just sort of, the way the intention is that they work as sort of role-play milestones uh, for, the, for the group to decide where they want to prioritize their time and what sort of a story they want to be telling. Um, because the theory goes then that everyone's working together to accomplish them. Um, same goes for the long-term goals. So, I mean, you can swap them out as you see fit. The idea is, is that you've always got something that you're trying to do, striving toward to drive the story forward. Everything's yeah. about trying to move the story uh, forward and keep the story from stagnating. Hmm. Got it. Now, what about the long-term aspirations? Like for mine, it's like I've got, I want to obtain another powerful artifact is what i've you know got written down then you so, just uh, you just su succeeded at that so that because you did obtain that skull yeah but is um, that mine personally though because i'm talking about like as an artifact collector i want to you know th this was part of our mission i don't know that i get to keep it or do i oh you're saying you want like to have a personal personally a Additional collection. personal artifacts. I want to be basically an artifact collector, you know. Yeah, so that probably, unless you choose to keep this one, uh, that probably wouldn't uh, be fulfilled yet. And, and choosing to keep this one, I mean, like, you know, burn bridges and get your organization right. pissed yeah, off at you. Not, 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 <laughs> like, run off right. with it, you know. <laughs> then they'll send a group after me. <laughs> right. Um, so, yeah, we'll say probably not this time then. Um and what was your long term for Ruby? Uh, to catch the widow. That was your long term aspiration. I I didn't write down whether they were short term or long term, but that was one of my aspirations. What were the other ones that you had? Um, I had land the plane, which you did, and complete the mission. And then I also I also oh, yeah. had one. That was um, to to um, get revenge on the man who murdered my family. I think that was your long term. Yeah. So you get. I just don't know if, if that one will tie into the the plot or not. So I don't know. If well, that's, that's yeah, why they're no. there is to tie into the plot. So now I now that I have that in my mind, I can tie it into the plot. Okay. Um, so long term aspiration. Uh, when you fulfill one, Let's see. one second. Okay, so the long terms uh, also just give you the experience when they're completed. Um, they're just meant to be something of more of an overarching uh, goal. Okay. So, yeah. Rock and roll. Well, that was cool. fun. Did anybody have any questions, comments, complaints, or concerns about how the story went? Nope. nope. Ruby is super stoked that she captured the Red Widow, but also kind of hopes she escapes. <laughs> is, it because, <laughs> is it because you want her to impersonate you so you can, have a, so you can make out with yourself? Just... Ruby might have a little bit of a crush. It's possible. I mean, that's fair. That's fair. That was that was pretty. That was that was pretty dope. That was a pretty boss move. 
<laughs> like pull you in for a very, very bitey kiss to get your DNA so that she could psychically uh, mimic yeah. you. Yeah, it's, it was sexy. It's pretty. It's pretty into it. Hot. Pretty mm-hmm. All right. Uh, uh, yeah, Thoth is just like chomping at the bit, hoping that he'll be one of the, the agents assigned to you know find out what the hell this thing is, and also curious about. Did I just get Jedi powers? <laughs> <laughs> That's valid. That's a valid curiosity. And for Victoria? Mm, well, I'm keen to observe uh, these interesting biopsionic developments. Uh, I did not expect to uh, have stuff that hit so close to my specialty. Uh, and this uh, archaeology group, uh, book club mission <laughs> so it's uh it's pretty cool i'm gonna stick with this group well, and I look, uh, and do stuff i look forward to You're seeing where things team. go um yes. so do you all um are we still planning on being back here two weeks from this time same time yes is that accurate all right yes. rock and roll and then wait, on the wait, hold on hold on wait we're doing the second and fourth wednesdays Yes. So is that not two weeks from now? It's not because this month has five Wednesdays. Okay. Yes. It's a special. So reason. yeah, the thirteenth. So we'll be back the thirteenth. All right. Okay. Yep. So second and fourth uh, Wednesdays do... because the opposing ones are set first, third, yeah. Makes However, sense. next Thursday next we Thursday. might have Travis over on our other channel. That's right. Okay. Yes. And what and we have to get a time hammered out for that but yeah um on as soon as we do as soon as we do we'll have it up in the discord server i would assume right yeah yes that's good cool yeah. and uh All other right. things kind of kind of wish we could do this a little more frequently but uh same we'll that. Yeah. yeah this is if we same. can find, find a way to do this a little more frequently that'd probably, that'd probably be fine. yeah the two hours makes it uh much well and, and we and we, we may really be able, once this month is over I may be able to either extend the time or do it more frequently or do something along those lines, start early or something like that. But cool. one thing I do want to make sure that I let the channel know, because this is, the I think, the first time I've been on since it got announced. Um, the Technocracy Reloaded uh, Kickstarter is starting next Tuesday um, yes. at 2 p.m. Eastern, I believe. So if you're a fan of Mage the Ascension, uh, the 20th anniversary edition Technocracy book will be coming out. And I was the one of the developers on that book. So it's going to be a very busy, but very fun and rewarding month for me. Um, cool. That's also going to include some new uh, stuff over at the Onyx Path Twitch channel where I'm program director. I will be running a Technocracy Chronicle probably on Tuesdays. Uh, well, definitely on Tuesdays, uh, starting May 5th. I will be announcing the time fairly soon. We're still working out the specifics of the time on that as well. So. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm excited. I'm stoked about it. I got, uh, it was literally a dream come true to get to work on Mage the Ascension. So, um, yeah, I, I have like ticked off a bucket list item. Um, Yay. And Yay. Then, congratulations. Good luck on the streams. Yeah. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. And then, uh, yeah, definitely, uh, if you could, let's go around and do uh, who you are, what you do, your pronouns, and where we can find you. And maybe, you know, who you're playing, too. Sounds like so much stuff, but it's really not. Uh, but we'll start with uh, we'll start with Ruby because she's old hat at this by this point. Cool. Hi, my name is Ailey. She her pronouns. I play Ruby. Also, she her pronouns. And I am a fetish model. I am part of Tabletopless, which is an X-rated D&D stream. And you can find all of my links and absolutely everything on ExploreAileyCat.com. Woohoo! Sweet. Yeah, everything she said, except my name is Anna Cherry. You can call me Cherry, and I'll drop my links as well. Yeah, you know, we ought to have uh, a single source. I mean, most of your stuff is on Twitter, isn't it? Uh, like, most of your links can be get, gotten to on Twitter. Is that correct? Well, I have, like, a profile that has all my links on it. Okay. Yeah. But, yes. And, uh, yes, I'm Richard, also known as Thoth. And uh, it, it, I'm not she, her, <laughs> he, him. Um, and uh, let's see, I, I, you're going to be able to find me in, in most of the places you can find either of them. Uh, so. <laughs> sweet, sweet. Check us out on Tabletopless. 
and right. but right. only if projects, you're an adult. Yeah. Yes, please, only the grown folk. Over 18, 18 plus. Um, and yeah, uh, you can find me here when I'm not here. I'm over at the uh, Onyx Path uh, Twitch channel when I'm not there. Um, I'm on Twitter and Facebook everywhere uh, at Travis Leg. Uh, it's L E G G E. Uh, and yeah, on the 30th, uh, we're going to play some Odysseys and Overlords, uh, which I am looking forward to. It's an OSR, um, like old school D&D style uh, game. So it's going to be very fun. I think mm-hmm. out of all of you, have any of you played like AD&D, like old school, like Dungeons and Dragons? I have. I used to have all the, you know, okay, so AD&D. I you know. started at 3.5, so no. One of the, th- one of the things I love 3.5. about the engine that, that Odysseys and Overlords is based on <laughs> is it's largely the AD&D experience, except without Thacko. So, <laughs> so you just... <laughs> Rude Thacko. Regular yeah. ascending armor class, because nobody wants to do long division to figure out if you hit someone. Um. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm gonna likely loot it up so so much because of the the what is it called the, the wild thing folk is, I, and everybody race. heard oh loot it up instead of lewd. No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's too. Oh, I have such plans. Such terrible, terrible plans. Such wonderful, terrible plans. I look forward to. You're looking at an abyss kiss, right? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> There's something. There we have. What was what was the whole thing? The alliteration is getting to us. The with hibiscus. <laughs> hibiscus, the hibiscus, and then there was something else too. Hibiscus, nice. the hibiscus. Uh, no, I'm looking at the wild folk um, because they they have the forbidden love of. Uh, humans and and beasts. That's right. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so interesting um, backstory about the setting uh, that I think sometimes people might miss when they are um, reading about it is in Odyssey and Overlords. There was a war between the gods, right? And this whole war kicked off because sorry, I'm trying to talk and type at the same time, and I'm terrible at it. Um. um There we go. Sorry. All right. Uh, the whole war kicked off because humans and animals had this sort of bond between them. Uh, they were able to love it freely and they were, you know, know, conscious of it. And, you know, it's all like, you know, it's all consenty. It's not like, you know, I'm going to go mm-hmm. bang a dog type of thing. Um, you know, it's they had consensual loving relationships. And there was one god that got pissed off about that because they were jealous that they felt that adoration that should have been pointed at them from both species was not being pointed at them. So they picked a fight with all the rest of the gods. And it caused most of the gods to get killed and the animals to largely be struck dumb. But the children that were born of those unions prior to that are the wild folk. So I think it's just a try to come up with an interesting way to make a new playable race that's like animal folk and yeah. i don't think i've quite seen that in games before uh, i'm gonna take that and i'm gonna be an animal folk that nobody finds in D all that frequently the pony <laughs> i love it i love it oh yeah i'm a fan it's going to be quite a thing <laughs> I can't wait I look forward to it. I have a player in this in the Wednesday, the Scarland stream that's opposite this that um, I may have to put you in contact with about some costuming stuff because she's playing in Iron Bread and she wants to figure out how to do her costume up. Um, <laughs> but at that note, we will get out of your hair. Um, thank you all so much for joining us, whether you're joining us live or joining us uh, on YouTube or shortly on the podcast. Once I know exactly where I'm going to be putting it up. I'm also going to be putting out audio recordings of this. Um, I just have been lazy and slow and not gotten to it. So for that, I apologize. Um, But yeah, we will see you all again real soon. Uh, Take care, wash your hands, and stay safe and socially distant. Don't touch your face. Don't touch your face. (laughs)